What is going on my broskies, my name is Toadski back again, here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video, and in today's video, this is going to be more of a discussion video, talking more about the brand new Super Sugo Fest exclusive characters being Luffy and the Straw Hats, and then Roger and Whitebeard. Now, a lot of people have been, you know, discussing in the community on Discord, Reddit, Twitter, everywhere. People have been discussing which of these two characters I like the most. I think a lot of people can pretty much agree to the fact that both of these legends are amazing. And that's kind of what I want to get through in today's video is that I don't really think that there is a bad choice for selecting which part of the Sugo Fest you want to be pulling on. I've already made a video talking about each of the parts in there. Gen generally just speaking, you know, which ones are the best. I do think just to give a general statement that parts two and three are a little bit better because they actually contain other Super Sugo Fest exclusive characters. However, on part one of the Sugo Fest, only Luffy and the Straw Hats and Roger and Whitebeard are available for Super Sugo units. So if you want characters like Luffy Law Kid, Roger V1, or Yamato, you have to pull in the other parts. And I think it's a little bit more valuable to get a wide variety of characters that you may not already have, compared to just pulling for the new units. So keep that in mind. But today, we're going to go ahead and jump into breaking down these two units, giving my opinions on them, and kind of just comparing and contrasting the two, and kind of breaking down which components of each character I actually like. So we're going to start things off with uh, the actual Straw Hat characters because the Straw Hat characters I think are just super unique with their entire kit. So we've obviously got their dual captain effect and both captains are really good. The fact that their solo captain effects are such high multipliers is one of the biggest drawbacks that I've found with dual units. So they've really changed that with these types of dual units releasing where even in their non-combined form, they hold their own, and I really do love that. So their special ability gives themselves minus four cooldown, which is cool, but the fact they have a 16 turn cooldown is absolutely ridiculous, and that is with Limit Break Expansion. I don't know what its natural cooldown is going to max out at. Um, that's actually, well, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy either way, right? So the fact that they give themselves minus four cooldown makes sense, but I think, you know, if they didn't have that, this character would be a pretty awful captain in terms of the fact you'd have to stall for so long. You'd have to use like speed tactics in order to get through content to get their special when you actually need it. But uh, they also give themselves a 5.25 times boost to your crew with a matching slot. Otherwise, it's a 5 times boost. And that's to all characters, by the way. Whereas Roger and Wipe, we'll talk about in a moment, are restricted. And they also give 1.5 times health. That's a really big health pool. And if this character is the captain, specials that will buff a certain color or a certain class work for the entire team instead. And they also provide healing at the end of the turn so great tankiness with innate healing and a really great health boost great multipliers but i think multipliers are kind of they're just like redundant to talk about in this video because both of them are amazing with their multipliers don't need to talk about that but it's their other surrounding abilities so the cooldown for themselves the increased tankiness with health and healing and their also innate ability to allow your class and type boosting specials to work for all characters instead while that is a really cool mechanic you do have to keep in mind that this character already provides an amazing amount of support to your team via their special ability with attack orb and, and color affinity and all of those other boosts we'll talk about in a moment but this character as a captain while that effect is cool i don't think it's as important as initially stated you know it is a cool effect and it's going to have some niche uses but i don't think it's as important as people make it out to be when you compare the captain ability of roger and newgate you can see that they're going to boost slasher and striker characters by a value of 5.5 times the highest flat multiplier that we've ever seen in the game's history though it is restricted to those two classes of slasher and striker they also give the 1.2 times health boost and provide int and psi slots as beneficial and also reduce bind paralysis and special bind by one turn of course when you switch between roger and whitebeard you have a pretty stark difference compared to the straw hats where the captain abilities are more or less the same this guy actually does change quite a fair bit because this guy with roger provides bind paralysis and special bind removal by one turn as a captain whereas Whitebeard just doesn't have that. He just gives himself a further 0.25 extra bonus, which honestly is terrible. I wish both of them had the same captain effect. Honestly, I think it would have been way more fair because Whitebeard's captain effect is like so much worse. It's not even a competition. But captain effect alone, I think you got to give it to the Straw Hats. The fact that they boost all characters by a very good multiplier and they have a very unique ability that only they have to make class and type boosting specials work for all characters instead. 
but that's taking nothing away from Roger and Whitebeard because I do believe that this is a fantastic captain ability and it's going to be hard to power creep this one for a very long time. Back over to the Straw Hats now, I want to have a look at their switch effect. So the switch effect, the base switch effect of the Straw Hats give them self a matching slot that goes through block slots and they remove their own slot bind and their own paralysis. A pretty basic swap effect, very self-centered, self-focused, giving themselves that slot, um, basically guaranteeing them a slot essentially unless if you're inflicted with the slot change impossible or you're given like a super bomb slot or something along those lines right but more or less they're going to be getting a guaranteed slot every single turn which is a great effect and then their switch effect which is a benefit to them only requires four switches roger and white bid require a little bit more but their effect again is going to remove slot bind and paralysis and give themselves a matching slot but the added effect with the super switch is that they reduce the entire team's paralysis and bind ship ability by four turns this is the first effect i think in the game that specifically states removes bind ship you know we've had to rely on limit break potential abilities to remove it in the past this is the first effect that actually does it though you do have to admit that bind ship ability is one of the most uncommon debuffs that we see in the game so the fact that that's there doesn't really that make that much of a difference unless if they consistently apply it to our uh, you know teams later on down in the road but removing four turns of paralysis with a super switch is pretty awesome and it's definitely going to see a lot of play even as a crewmate right you don't even have to use this guy as a captain to get the super switch that's a really useful effect and even if you're running double luffy removing eight turns of paralysis just by activating a switch effect whilst getting a guaranteed matching slot is pretty great but then when you move over to roger and whitebeard i think it's no competition that this is definitely the better switch effect of the two new characters their base switch effect changes adjacent slots into matching and provides a 1.5 times attack boost and a 1.5 times slot effect boost to all characters on your crew i mean it's basically just shanks crew's switch effect on crack it is so insanely busted and this is going to work remember as a crewmate on so many different teams moving forward even on teams where this character isn't boosted having access to this switch effect is just absolutely incredible especially when you know what their special does which we'll get to soon it makes their switch effect that much more broken than what it already is it is so strong and then of course after six switches you get their super switch which will change all slots into matching and double your cruise attack and double your cruise slot effects this super switch alone is going to enable you to basically clear so many bosses especially when you counter in the fact that their you know base multipliers are incredibly high this is a great super switch and i mean as we've already stated this is not going to be power crept in a very long time we've already seen how good shanks crew is for such a long period of time even just as a sub due to their amazing switch effect and now you've got access to this I mean, there's literally no downsides to it. It's probably the best, if not one of the best, switch effects in the entire game's history. Now, the special ability of the Straw Hats is very nuanced. There's lots of little components into it. So first of which, every time you activate the special, you're going to do 300 times their attack and typeless damage to all enemies, and also change all slots, including block, into rainbow slots. That will happen every single time you use it. However, there are differing effects that will occur depending on how many beneficial effects are activated when you launch the special. So when you launch the special, if you've only got one beneficial effect or you have no beneficial effects, it gives you two times attack, two times all boost, two times color affinity, and a 0.8 chain boost. Now the color affinity attack and all boost all activate for two turns. That's incredible, having that many buffs activate at once, on top of the fact that they're giving you rainbow slots, like that's a really powerful effect to have, and then just getting chain boost on that first activation, it's just absolutely incredible. But when you activate that effect, it states that for the rest of that turn, you cannot get any more beneficial effects, so there is downsides to that, right? Now that is one side of the effect. Now, if you activate the special ability and you have two or more beneficial effects, that attack or boost color affinity is not going to activate instead it's going to lock your cruise slots for two turns and then extend the duration of damage boosting effects 
by one turn. So that means that any attack boost, orb boost, color affinity, conditional boost, any effect that increases the amount of damage that you do will be extended for a further turn. And then obviously, as we said, it gives you the, the orb lock for two turns as well. Remember, every time you activate it, you're getting the rainbow slots, meaning that you are going to be getting a full board of rainbow slots that are locked for multiple turns. The enemy cannot change them no matter what. And that's a pretty powerful effect to have. So I like the fact that this character can work in different ways, though that can be both a good thing and a bad thing, because, you know, if you activate that first effect to get all of those beneficial effects, there may be some other effect that you really, really want to use, and that will enable you to kind of not use that effect anymore, which kind of sucks. Or if you, act if you need to activate one special ability before the Straw Hats, if that effect gives you like a couple of beneficial effects that you didn't really want, you can't use the other effect of the straw hats to give you the attack, the orb boost, the color affinity. It's going to be difficult to kind of balance this character out when you're doing team building. You really have to make sure the characters that you use on your crew are fitting the roles that they are designed to do to ensure you get around the different utility buffs, getting around gimmicks, making sure you have enough damage for the fight, of course. Um, I think it's really difficult to team build with this character, despite the fact that it is a rainbow boosting captain at the end of the day. So yeah, very nuanced. You have to be very careful with team building with this character. But if you do build correctly, this is one of the most powerful special abilities in the game. Switching back over to Roger now, comparing their special abilities, this is a really cool effect of you get differing effects depending on who activates the special ability. So if Goldie Roger launches his special, he removes 20 turns of despair. He also will make any attack boost on your crew be extended, or not really extended, but be buffed up to a three times attack boost instead. And then any color affinity boost is buffed by 0.5 as well as fusing for three turns so that's a really cool effect and newgate's effect when he launches the special also reduces 20 turns of despair and will also give a two times color affinity boost to your slasher and your striker characters and buffing any or boost to three times instead and then fusing for three turns so the really cool thing about this is that you can use any other attack boost or any other orb boost before launching this special and no matter what it's going to be either a three times attack boost or it's going to be a three times orb boost or you can just go ahead and get a color affinity boost if you want as well or you can go ahead and buff any color affinity boost that's already active again we'll take a little bit of time to kind of plan your team around it because potentially you want a certain orb boost to activate or a certain attack boost to activate but as we've already discussed with the switch effect of roger and whitebeard they give you a rainbow attack boost and a rainbow orb boost so even if you wanted to use a different orb boost with one of your characters you can activate that effect and then ensure that when you use the switch effect you only get the attack boost from this switch effect and then when you launch roger's special any attack boost that is active like the one from his switch effect will be buffed to 3x so even if you're using just one of them you can have another orb booster for another type of unit and you can have that in in your arsenal or you could go ahead and switch it around let's say you wanted a very specific attack boost on your crew and then you can use new gate to give you that three times orb boost instead hypothetically if you only had one of them but if you've got both roger new gate as both of your captains or if you have one as a friend captain one as your crewmate you can get a guaranteed three times attack, three times orb boost, and a 2.5 times color affinity with two characters on your crew. It's a pretty incredible effect to have. So I think honestly, Roger and Newgate, I think are gonna be better over time as a crewmate because not only is that switch effect amazing and he's very good for pretty much any team, but the fact that they can make use of their switch effect with their special ability to get a powerful three times attack or even a three times orb boost for your crew and buff any other color affinity effect that gets activated along the way, this unit is going to be amazing as a, as a captain or as a crewmate. And the final component that I want to break down before we end this video today, we're not going to be talking about Pirate Rumble, but the last thing that we need to talk about is the final tap. Now, final tap is interesting for this unit because for Luffy and the Straw Hats, I think this is by far and away the best final tap that the game has ever come out with. So let's go ahead and break it down. The requirement's very easy, just reach the final stage. There's no condition for it. As long as you reach the final stage, you get this ability. Now at level five, it adds 1.2 times the total damage dealt from normal attacks from your other characters during this turn on top of your final damage. So to kind of surmise this for you guys, after you attack with your first five characters and then Luffy and the Straw Hats attacks last on that attack, 
the other five characters that have attacked hypothetically if they dealt five million damage what you would do is is you would multiply five million by 1.2 and that amount of damage is added on top of this character's final attack that can equate to some pretty crazy numbers. I mean, that's a very small example, but I think the biggest example would be in like a Kizuna, for example, because you're in, an, in, in, a, in a type of situation where you want to be building damages of upwards of 500 million, 600 million, up to a billion damage. I mean, with these current captains that we have these days, you know, over a billion damage is not that difficult to achieve. And if you're able to have a final tap that can take a billion damage, multiply it by 1.2 and add it on top of your final tap, that's pretty incredible right and the fact is is that this can bypass normal attacks only this bypasses all of those types of effects you're guaranteed to get this damage no matter what so i think overall luffy and the straw hats might be the most valuable final tap even if i had this character i don't think i would max it just yet because it's it's not a required thing you don't need to have this at level five in any sense but i think that out of all the final taps thus far this is probably the one that would probably deserve the tablets the most and then finally let's talk about roger and newgate's final tap the exact same condition as long as you reach the final battle you'll be able to achieve it and they are going to give themselves a guaranteed matching slot which is kind of nice because even if you have a full board of block slots as long as this character attacks last you're going to be able to get a full matching slot for themselves and then any chain that is currently active will get a plus 4.0 added to it at the end so even if you attack with all five of your characters your last character will have a 2.5 times chain multiplier on that last hit and then with final tap activating becomes 2.5 to 6.5 that is a huge damage jump on top of giving them a matching slot of course if they didn't have one previously this is really strong um but of course it's kind of similar to yamato in a sense where you know yamato is really based around having a really high chain multiplier and if you do reach that last hit it just doubles that chain multiplier that you currently have i think yamato's final tap will overall reach a higher damage cap but at the same time having access to this is also really good because you could have like a chain lock for example you could have like a like a 3.5 times chain lock all your characters hit extremely hard and then final tap you know a 3.5 chain lock becomes a you know 7.5 chain at the end of that hit that's pretty strong right that's really good i think it's a good final tap but i mean after reading the straw hats it's like well it's no real competition the straw hats i think are a much better final tap because it helps you out in a lot more scenarios but um of course final tap is just going to make this guy hitting extremely hard there's no ifs or buts about it and even at level one which i, I do want to point out as well even at level one they still get a guaranteed matching slot, which I think is really good because some of the other final taps that we've seen that give them a slot, um, sometimes that only happens at like level three or level four. This happens at level one, even through block orbs guaranteed slot and, and a plus 2.0 to that chain. So I think that you don't really need to max out Roger and Newgate's final tap because even at level one, it, it's perfectly fine. But definitely for the Straw Hats, that's that's a really good one to level up. So to kind of give you guys a bit of a summary, I think both of these units are going to be incredible units, not only for now, but for many months to come down the line. They're going to be buffing, you know, Striker and Slasher, having access to Goldie, Roger, and Newgate for all of this time is going to be so good and as i've already said even in teams where they're not even boosted roger and newgate are going to be so powerful with that amazing switch ability and then their special that can buff their own switch effect to a three times attack or a three times all boost it's going to be awesome and of course straw hats having a very unique captain ability and a special ability that can work in different scenarios but i think it is a little bit difficult to team build for it but if you build correctly the straw hats are going to be a formidable character in your character box with one of the best if not the best definitely the best final tap in the entire game hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today let me know down below in the comment section which of these two new characters you like the most and which part of the sugo fest do you think you guys are going to be pulling on hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today and if you guys did enjoy it make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video